Hi everybody, welcome to this webinar. The topic of the webinar is ex customer experience redefined relationship during and after COVID-19. I introduce myself, Dr. Christopher Raj, Professor, MBA department, DMS, BITM Bellary. And my area of interest is marketing and operations research. The objective of this webinar is number one, evaluating the challenges of changing customer attitude. Number two, identifying the key focus areas for realigning the marketing activities, contemplating the best business marketing practices. The outcome of the webinar, participants will evaluate the impact of pandemic scenario and build comprehensive marketing strategy. So before going to the topic, let's have a basic understanding about the elements of terminologies of marketing because since the participants are all students of final year undergraduate degree course. So let's study about the basics of marketing. What is market? Market is a place where buyers and sellers meet together in order to carry on transactions of goods and services. So marketing in economic terms is an economic term where it's physical and it's virtual. Physical is like example, buying a fruits and vegetables in the market, it's a vegetable market, a food ma fruit market, or in a virtual market is buying goods online or a virtually a virtual virtual markets like derivative markets. Coming to the marketing, is an organizational function and a set of process for creating, communicating, and delivering value to customers and for managing customer relationship in a way that benefits the organization and stakeholders. So marketing is an organizational function. It's an entity that gives value to the stakeholders. So coming to marketing management, it's a process of planning and executing the conception, pricing and promotion and distributions of ideas, goods and service to create an exchange that satisfies individual and organization goals. So marketing management is a think tank it's a process of planning and executing the organization goals to satisfy the goals and goals of the organization. So coming back to the marketing concept, the basic concepts are STP, segmenting, targeting, and positioning. Segmenting, marketers start by dividing the market into segments. They identify and profile distinct groups of buyers who might prefer or require varying product and service mixes by examining demographic, psychographic, and behavioral differences among buyers. So here market segmentation is marketers divide the market of heterogeneous, heterogeneous market into homogeneous markets of distinct group of buyers based on demographic, psychographics, and behavioral uh, criteria. The target markets. After identifying market segments or group of buyers towards which an organization decides to direct its marketing plan is called marketing target market. The idea behind market segmentation is for an organization to choose one or few meaningful segments and concentrate its efforts on satisfying the selected part of market. So coming to positioning, the firm develops a market offering that it pos positions in the mind of a target buyers and delivers some central benefits. Market positioning is a ranging of products to occupy a clear, distinctive, desirable place relative to com competing products in the minds of a target consumers. 
value. Value is a sum of tangible and intangible benefits and cost to products. Value is a central marketing concept, is primarily a combination of quality, service, and price, called as customer value trade. Satisfaction is a person's feeling of pleasure or disappointment resulting in comparing a product perceived performance in relation to his or her expectations. So let's learn about marketing process. The marketing process is firstly, assessing demand measurements and forecasting. Demand, estimating the current and future size of a market and its segment. Forecasting is a technique used. The different techniques are continuity, extrapolation, technique, time series analysis, exponential smoothing, regression, and correlation analysis. The second marketing step of marketing process is segmenting and select the target market. The third point is developing the marketing mix. McCarthy classified these tools into four broad groups that he called the four piece of marketing, product, price, place, and promotion. And service-oriented piece are people, process, and physical evidence. The art of blending the elements, the marketing elements. It is like a chef preparing a meal. It is a combination of the set of uh, appropriations so that we could get a real mix, marketing mix. There is no perfect formula for creating a marketing mix. It's a just a appropriation of fund to these four P's. The funds that are appropriated on transportation of goods that is place, the, the appropriation of funds for advertisement is called promotions and for the cost of the products to be produced and the profits that earn is price. The blend of all these are a tactical marketing tool and which blends into an integrated marketing program that actually delivers the intended value to the target customers. And fourth, the last uh, step in mar uh, marketing processes, managing marketing efforts, marketing planning, marketing implementation, and marketing controlling. So coming to marketing activity, the marketing activity just refers to an uh, activity that is intended to create value. For example, making a cold call on a, on, on a phone and meeting customers at the trade shows. So let's learn about product characteristics and classification. Many people think the product is tangible, but, all, but a product is anything that can offer to a market to satisfy a need on physical goods and service. The core benefit, basic product, expected product, augmented product, and potential products. So let's learn about the core benefit. Is a fundamental level of service or benefit that customer is really buying. Example, a hotel guest is buying rest and sleep. To this core benefit, you add up a basic product. The hotel room includes bed, bathroom, towels, desk, dresses, and closet. Coming to expected products is a third level that a marketer prepares an expected product. A set of attributes and conditions buyers normally expect when they purchase this product. Hotel guests, minimal expected, a clean bed, fresh towels, working lamps, and a little degree of quietness. And let's, and coming to augmented products that exceeds customer expectation. Hotel guests expect a remote control satellite tele television, high internet speed, access to fresh glass, rapid exit and express checkouts and fine dining rooms, service, fully equipped uh, fitness center. Coming to the potential products, the example of potential products is hotel guest finds a candy on a pillow or a fresh or a fruit of bowl or a video recorder with optional video tapes. So these are the basic terminologies of marketing. So come, let's talk about now customer experience concerning 
sir, the Atma Nirbha again. Sir, the experience is being known and championed by the marketing department. Atma Nirbha. Brand equity. According to Accenture, 86% of B2B CMOs reported that they consider customer experience to be a very important parameter. So, building a solid grasp of customer experience marketing is crucial to staying at the top of your digital marketing game. Consumers' experience must be consistent, as delightful, and as frictionless as possible at every stage of the journey. And it should also be hyper personal. Hyper-personalization yeah. is a technique that combines yeah. behavioral, yeah, yeah, yeah. real-time, yeah. extracted yeah. Yeah. From yeah. From the channel and touch point yeah. to deliver yeah. a high yeah. relevant experience to the end. Yeah. Yeah. Great yeah. customer experience yeah. is going to fuel yeah. your yeah. growth yeah. engine yeah. as it helps yeah. increase yeah. customer loyalty, repeat purchase, word of mouth, and positive yeah. Yeah. proofing. Yeah. Oracle report found 86% yeah. of consumers will pay more better consumer experience and 89% of consumers begin to do business with the competitors falling in poor experience, customer experience. 79% of consumers who shared their complaints about the poor experience online had the complaints ignored. No, no, no. Backdrop of coronavirus pandemic. All relationships have an emotional component, and that holds true for connecting between people and brands. Business relationship with customers is built over time, nourished by experiences along with many online and physical touch points in the journey, grounded in expectation, confirmed through repeated interactions. A crisis puts both strength and weakness in your relationship under a spotlight. And the corona pandemic is not just a crisis. The lockdown, the nature of this response to this crisis, which is forcing people to be physically separated from their friends, extended families, workplace, and favorite place. or leisure, time experience yeah. is a requiring organization to adapt to the digital or remote way of doing business and is dramatically altering people's daily experiences. So as a business thinker, how do you help people thrive when they are stressed, fearful and longing for authentic human connection? And how do you lessen the impact of novel corona as it topples every aspect of the business like a slow motion tsunami three points to remember points to understand don't let panic shake your customer focus your most important stakeholder right now is human being who is craving comfort and connection and suddenly needs new customer experience pwt Research shows that 59 of a global consumer survey feel companies have lost touch with human elements of consumer experience. And 75% of consumers surveyed prefer to interact with human versus an automated machine. Does your outreach feel authentic, caring, or does it appear self-serving? So getting advice online or solving problem, an example being a tech health without direct human contact, delivering food, grocery, medics, other essential to doorsteps. Keep in mind that the impact of these actions you take today will probably outlast the pandemic and define the loyal people have to your brands and to your products. Second, find ways to make digital more human. B2C company typically encounter customers on multiple channels, physical, that is face-to-face, -face, remote via mail or phone, digital via online and support. Up till now, you have been probably prioritizing efficiency, transitioning human interactions where 
possible to digital or automated ones. Forging the future together, these emotions, realities are so valid when it comes to relationship between business and consumers. If we suffer together and yet support each other, those bonds strengthen over the long term. They can even form a new basis for how brands and consumers can connect in future. Consumer as a famous consultant company have expressed and experts to exploit the fundamentals of consumer interaction as well as steps necessary to redesign the business in a more and to organize it with more optimal business outcomes. Armed with advanced analytics, consumer experience lead leaders can gain rapid insights to build consumer loyalty, make employees happier, achieve revenue gains of five to ten. 25 within two to three years. To improve the consumer experience, move from touch points to journey, observe, shape, and perform. Data analytics, as we know today, is the process of examining the data sets and draw conclusions to make informed business decisions. It is also worth noting that the human civilization started to curate interpret and summarize data since early times in order to bring out the values and insights. Talking about the 20th century, statistician William Seeley Gossett, who was working in a brewery, applied his statistical knowledge to select the best yielding varieties of barley. All such types of statistical methods stayed with the mathematicians and statisticians till the mid of century. In the last few decades, software tools like Excel, SAS and programming languages like R and Python have been making tremendous progress, enabling the data scientists of today's time to apply statistical algorithms using ready-made libraries and new algorithms. Let us talk about how the tools and software for data have evolved over the century. SAS was the earliest software to be developed for data analytics. The North Carolina University started working the project named Statistical Analysis System in 1966 and worked until 1976 when the SAS Institute got incorporated. SAS continued to grow and mature as a product and in early 2000, they introduced several new tech areas like social media analytics. Our language for data analytics wasn't developed from a software research lab, but rather from the need of statistic professors who need the technology for quick statistical computing. In 1991, statistical professors Ross Ihaka and Robert Gentleman from University of Auckland started working full-time to develop a language that could fulfill the much-needed technology for statisticians. They launched the first version of the R language in 1993. Since then, R has been in support and updated regularly. It is also one of the most widely used programming languages due to its open source contributed rich set of libraries. R is currently dominating the data science industry. Coming up to Microsoft Excel. As you already know that Microsoft Excel is a very common tool used by all types of industries, both small and medium companies, professionals and individuals for diversified purposes. In 2016, O'Reilly conducted a survey to find out which is the most common tool used by the data analysts. 70% of the respondents answered Excel. 
demonstrating the wide and deep usage of the tools for data analysis. Moving to Python, which is a general-purpose programming language created by the Dutch programmer Guido van Rossum. The first version of the language was released in 1991. Python libraries like NumPy and Pandas are the backbone for data science. Python is also used as a scientific scripting language to rectify the problems of numerical data processing and manipulation. As a part of Google Summer of Code project 2005, David Conopo, a data scientist from Paris, started working on creating a machine learning library called Scikit-Learn for Python. The first version of the library was launched in 2007. Just over the last year or so, Python has started to become the first choice for data scientists, especially in the area of deep learning. Today, Python has been listed as the third most used programming language by social programming community GitHub. But what happens if you have really large data which is semi-structured or worse, unstructured? It can take hours and days to build and execute your tasks to finally get any results out of your efforts. All these requirements led to the birth of the big data. The growth of big data is divided into five dimensions known as the five V's of big data which are volume, velocity, variety, veracity and value. Let's take a look at each of these. The term volume is used in context with data size which is moving swiftly from gigabyte to terabyte, perabyte and so on. These volumes could not be stored and analyzed using traditional systems. Velocity refers to the speed at which the data is generated, stored or processed. It can be calculated in per hour, per minute or per second basis. Variety refers to the data that social media era has introduced in the form of unstructured data, be it text, images, videos that can be fit into the structured databases. The next V is veracity, means to identify the truth from all kind of information. The last V, that is value. Value is simply defined as the potential benefit of the data for the business. Now, let us talk about the technologies associated with big data. The big social media players have pioneered the technologies that can handle big data volumes. Hadoop framework consisting of the file system HDFS and programming language MapReduce is an open source software framework for storing and accessing big data. The technology has rapidly grown to make the power of data to the engineers in a friendlier manner. Big Scripting Language and Hive, an SQL-like interface to query data, have made big data engineers be able to deliver business results at speed. The real-time analytics gave birth to several frameworks and currently Apache Spark is leading the space to process real-time data with a powerful set of libraries including machine learning and graph processing. Data is the new gold or oil and it is imperative that all the different business functions are able to access and discover data, understand and interpret it, apply statistical modeling and fine-tune the method to gain the right level of insight and enable a truth-based decision-making. Hopefully, you have got a quick summary of the technology landscape that aids with data science. Starting in 2010, you know, Domino's really started to change its perception uh, with our consumers. And we went through a process of changing the pizza formula to make it a better pizza and better quality for our customers. Our customers wanted um, an easier way to order food, order pizza. 
Uh, they wanted to be convenient. They wanted to be frictionless. And so we made investments in apps for people to order with. And that really translated to a whole new set of experiences for the consumer. You know, you can literally order a Domino's pizza from almost any technology platform out there. And that's really where Cisco came in. Cisco provided that network infrastructure from the data center all the way down to the stores to ensure that that experience was consistent and reliable for our consumers as we made such a strategic push into the digital space. We have built a partnership of technology vendors like Cisco who understand that passion and actually share that passion with us. Technology and technology investments is a huge part of our success story, but more importantly, it's really engaged with our consumers and it's given our consumers a great experience and a great way to engage with our brand. Cisco has been a true partner to us. Their ability to provide the infrastructure that we desperately needed, that was state-of-the-art, secure, reliable, and scalable, allowed me to spend less of my time worrying about block and tackling, and more of my time worrying about how do we innovate, how do we build a competitive advantage over our competition, and what do we need to do next. That's the kind of challenge Cisco's up for, and I think that's been a really good partnership. Domino's Pizza is not the same as it was in 1985, 2000, or even 2010. It's a company in constant reinvention in order to stay ahead in the competitive business of selling pizza. Joining me today to share what the company may be cooking up next is Domino's President and CEO, J. Patrick Doyle. Thanks for joining us, Patrick. I Thanks, appreciate Brian. it. Well, one of the things I had to, that astounds me, astonishes me about Domino's, the menu hasn't changed much over the past couple of years. Your success, 11% sales growth in the most recent quarter, comes by keeping it simple. What should we expect from the menu going forward? Is it a new sandwich? Is it more chicken items? Or is it stuff that looks like right in front of us? You know, I, you're going to see occasional innovation on food, but our view is if we get it right, if we're doing the basics really well, we don't have to be part of that kind of product of the month club. And so for us, innovation is, you know, can be about the food. We launched um, specialty chicken uh, a little over a year ago. We launched a pan pizza. Uh, about three years ago, but those are the only two products we've launched in the last three years. So for us, news can come from a lot of places. It can come from food, but it can also come from technology. It can come from other innovations, ways that people can access the brand. And if we do that, we keep it simple in our stores so we can keep up the speed of service. Um, you know, the consistency on the food is going to be there because the menu isn't too broad. It just works better. We, we talked in July over summer, and one, you believe, I think you saw a skinny slice to schools. Right. Is there any updates? Because we're starting to see skinny menus roll out across pizza. Is there anything coming on that front? Yeah, I mean, we're continuing to roll that out into, into schools called Domino's Smart Slice, and it's got, uh, you know, whole wheat crust mm -hmm. and, and lower fat, lower sodium. It's a great product. And we're really using that for that market as a way to kind of get the product out there, get people used to eating it, and then we'll see. There may be an opportunity to roll that out more broadly. Well, I wish I had that when I was in school because we had frozen, disgusting Elios. But yeah, yeah I, I wish I had some Domino's, <laughs> whole wheat. Uh, and a big thing to your growth has been tech. Everybody talks about you in tech. What aren't you doing in tech that maybe you could do in tech? It feels though you just recently launched, you can order through Samsung TV. What is there left to do? Yeah, there, there's a lot left to do. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we think any place where there is technology, any place where there is a screen, you should be able to order from Domino's. And so you can do it through your Ford now, through the Ford Sync. You can do it off of Pebble or Android watches. You can do it through the Samsung TV. There are more things coming. I mean, basically think about any screen. Our view is you should be able to order Domino's through it. Well, I'm pumped to order uh, my Smart Slice and my Apple Watch eventually. Not saying that's now, but eventually. And last thing I came up researching is Pizza Mogul uh, was in Australia. Right. Could you take us through what that is uh, and could it end up in America? Yeah, it, it's really, it's this great program. So what they're doing in Australia is they're basically crowdsourcing new pizza ideas. So people come up with, you know, a pizza, they name it Brian's Pizza. And about. essentially we pay you then um, for every pizza that you sell. So we turn people into... Um, salespeople for us. They, they create a product, they go out, they put it up on social media. Every time somebody clicks through and orders that pizza, 
um, we pay them a, uh, a bounty, a commission on it. Uh, so really interesting program. And so, you know, we're, we're absolutely looking at it. And, and one of the things that works incredibly well with our system is our international master franchisees. These are big independent organizations and they've got marketing teams and great creativity. They come up with ideas. We all learn from each other. If somebody does something that works, we all look at it and say, hey, you know what, maybe there's an opportunity to do that in the U.S. or to do it in the U.K. or Mexico or India. And uh, so Beats and Mogul is terrific. It, it really is a very, very interesting idea. Well, I think one thing that I learned is I need to move to Australia and create my own pizza because I'm in the wrong <laughs> business. Well, thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time. The example for data analytics, consumers wants to an easier way to order pizza. See how Domino's uses Cisco technology to deliver a new way of thinking to its customers and business. Domino's embraces technology to differentiate itself in an ultra competitive market. With Cisco global and UGS infrastructure, the pizza pioneers will be igniting sales and Innovating its digital system to make Domino's an easiest company to order pizza. So next technology is creating a seamless consumer experience by building omni-channel transactions. On the other hand, Omni channel signifies a unified seamless operations between multiple touch points. Of shopping experience across all channels. This seamless shopping experience ranks high for UK consumers who value convenience 26%, above price 24, and as primary influencer when it comes to make purchasing on brand websites. So the, this example shows that there is multi-channel and omni channel. So multi-channel marketing is when one company is having conversation with one customer, but on different channels, stores, websites, mobile app, social media, etc. At each and every single touch point, the consum consumer the conversation is going between fourth between consumer and the company it starts and it ends so as we see here store and the consumer the conversation ends at this point when the consumer is the website the conversation ends here and these are the touch points that the conversation ends but in the omni channel you have, what happens is that if a consumer is, let's say, discussing about something with a business, that information is then shared to all the other touch points. Now you know, in an ideal, fully developed, omni channel experience, all of this information will be shared with the different channels and would reduce frustration for customers improving their consumer experience. Hello and welcome back to my channel, Your Customer Shoes, where I teach businesses how to create customer experiences which help your customers to choose you. In today's episode, we are going to quickly break down the differences between multi-channel and omni-channel marketing and why it matters for your customer experience. We're going to be looking at Warby Parker, Ray-Ban, and Area 51. Let's go take a walk in your customer's shoes. Let's quickly define these terms, then we'll look at some specific examples. Multi-channel marketing is when one company is having conversations with one customer, but on different channels, store, website, mobile app, social media, etc. At each and every single touch point, the customer, the conversation going back and forth between the customer and the company is start and end, start and end, start and end. The conversation, the data discovered, the products interested in, etc. 
it is all disconnected. It is not integrated. These different touch points of the company are not aware of the conversation that this customer has already had with another channel. So again, for clarification, it means that these touch points are not sharing information about the customer conversation with the other channels. This can create some frustration for the customer because let's say that a customer was on a website and they wanted, they were interested in a couple of items, they put them in their cart. Well, now they walk into the store, but now they have to physically find, search out those items. This can create friction and tension and a disconnected user experience for the customer because they may have to have the same conversation over and over and over again, depending on the channel that they're communicating with the business. Over here in Omnichannel, what happens is that if a customer is, let's say, discussing something, with a business. That information is then shared with all of the other touch points. Now this is, you know, in an ideal, fully developed omni-channel experience. All of this information would be shared with the different channels, which would reduce frustration for the customer, improving their customer experience because they now see, okay, this company is connected. I'm not going to have to repeat myself. It's very easy to do business with them because no matter how I touch their company, no matter where I move around, whether it's in their store or calling them or on their app or whatever, that my experience with their company is the same. It is seamless. It is to start a conversation maybe on a website and complete it in a store through a purchase and then post something about it on social media and for that experience to be completely seamless to the customer. That is what people want to shoot for. Ideally speaking, what we want to have is multi-channel marketing evolve into or at least incorporate an element of omnichannel marketing for the one reason that it improves the customer experience. So it's not to say that you know these two things are completely separate. It is to say that omnichannel would make a better customer experience if it used the information collected in a multi-channel environment. An important point to make here for the business owners and employees is that this is not just about improving the experience for the customer, but also for the employees. Now, if you work for, let's just say a large corporation who has all of these channels and maybe more, I think that it's fair to say that if a customer had been on the website and then came into the store or called, that you having some knowledge about that would make your job a lot easier. It would make your conversation with the customer a lot faster, improving the experience for both the customer and the employee. Let's go now to another technology, artificial intelligence in improving consumer experience. The following are the six ways AI can improve customer experience. Improving contactless, contactless personalized consumer care is considered one of the most valuable area where AI is improving consumer experiences. Anticipating and predicting how each consumer's preference of where, when and what will be will be buying will change with removing roadblocks well ahead of time for them. Recruiting new customer segments by using consumer experience improvements to keep them as prospects and convert them to customers. Retailers are combining personalization, AI-based pattern matching and product-based recommendation engines in their mobile apps enable shoppers to try on garments they're interested in buying virtually. Machine learning excels at pattern recognitions and IA is well suited for fine tuning recommend, recommendation engines which are together leading to a new generation of shopping apps where consumers can virtually try on garments. So this is a typical example of a consumer entering into the store and using AI 
technology and trying to wear different garments virtually and select the best one there's an option even to send an email of the image to friends where the recommendation recommended uh, dresses could be bought by the consumer so some of the examples of ai is and the advantage of ai is better self shelf intelligence startups are developing ai tech to track metric like share to shelf and distribute computer version platforms tracks retailers analyze what happens on physical shelf using image front in store cameras robots or mobile phones number 2 smart and beauty products brands like sifinor use ar apps that allow consumer try to on different virtual makeup looks retailers can then analyze and collect collect data face shapes wrinkles wrinkles and skin tones to better predict inventory needs the voice shopping that never was jeff bose said that the voice interface is only going to take you so far on shopping while e-commerce is growing customers still prefer going to store and see the products in person fourth cashless stores can solve thefts since amazon go there there has been a handful of startups developing cashless store technology using ai cameras and sensors with store loaded with cameras and automated charge customs this could reduce stealing fifth food delivery goes driverless pizza hut and dominos are also testing the viability of autonomous vehicles grab partnered with robot robotic startup neuro to pilot autonomous grocery delivery services to customers so marketing message strategies for consumer experience keeping in mind that we are going through each of these individuals and no novel approach to how people are dealing with this covid crazy situation online shopping e-commerce and wholesale mobile apps rise on a wave of panic shopping with major cities announcing lockdown self isolations and social distancing have led to the increase in users active activity on online shopping apps in united states e-commerce and online retail mobile apps have seen a steady increase in new and active users since the first week of march 2020 online food delivery apps work and order from home another industry that have seen an increase in users activity is online food delivery apps and surprisingly there has been steady increase using used in using activities on these mobile apps in north america since january 2020 for example doordash and on demand prepared food delivery service app in the region waived off the delivery fees for locals papa john as has been already a great where they actually offered no contact delivery they actually sh show how this is done through the app and they give get a a pretty easy step by step process but they do they can make sure that they handle the box and they put the box in front door and walk off over 6 feet back and then allow you to take the items so that they think lot of the some companies deliver even cocktails lassies these fruit salad Oi Hotels and Homes is one of the world's leading hotels during these times has modified its communication strategy into a more sociable empathetic empathizing one keeping in mind the sensitivity of situation worldwide they are also starting engaging with their audience by games and newsletters Oi Hotel daily newsletter access means to reach out to their customers with regular news updates on covid-19 this new news status is all about 
sharing warm, heartwarming stories from the community and highlighting safety tips and hygiene practices. Yeah, the travel and entertainment industries are working tirelessly at round clock to ensure the safety of the customers as well as the employees. Yatra reached out to more than 1.5 million users and was able to assist them in rescheduling and cancelling booking without any hesitation. It's an extreme and premium online destination for Indians to watch movies, TV shows, and live channels beg to differ amidst the COVID-19 chaos and brand initiating an awareness videos campaigns, Get Curious India, aided by one of their counter content partners, Curious Streams. Zoom Car, a self-driving car rental company, provides an easy access to users to drive any car across India. And the app offers the ease of renting, renting a car with a single click and getting it delivered at the doorstep. The brand serves more than 4 million users and is one of the highest rated cars rental apps in India. Distillery companies are creating a hand sanitizer from alcohol as alcohol is a major ingredient in other these hand sanitizers. So they have taken a really great approach to help the, uh, the, the, the creating their own hand sanitizers. This is Shine Spirits in Origo, USA. Online learners company Loom Pro has done this. They've made an offer, offering them free for teachers and students, and they're going to get just a ton of people to use it. Probably, would they would they have a long-lasting strategy? Forbes is offering online events, e summits called business resilience. It's so important for all the business moving forward. Also, online learning so the people who are at home right now. Or people who are doing social distance. We have posted only 100. LinkedIn uh, is offering free courses for students, courses on, on working from home available during the corona pandemic shutdown. Amazon is hiring hundreds of thousands of warehouse and delivery workers right now, and it's completely growing. Amazon and, and these big players are getting so inundated, flooded some of the delivery times are quite extended. So Amazon delivery times are for non-essential items are extended quite a bit. So if there are small e-commerce players, e-commerce retail players, you have a huge opportunity right now. If you can deliver fast and fulfill the niche where Amazon is not able to fulfill. Starbucks transforming mental, mental health benefits for US employees during this pandemic times. Nutter Health using its 24 in helpline to give assistance to anyone who wants to talk to doctors. It's one of the leading health brands that offer primary health care solutions to including online and clinical clinics, clinic medics and diagnosis at home and have been extremely vigilant during these tough times. The brand has sent a 24 into 7 helpline, InstaDoc, with doctors available online giving assistance on COVID-19, along with providing consultant on general issues without a customer's being required to go to clinic. Large companies like Armani, for example, in this case, donate 1.25 billion euros so that Italian hospitals tackle, tackle coronavirus. It's really good if you could, if you in a position of authority to donate to people and others can donate small donations. Important points. What is your communication strategy with the media? How are you helping? What is the communication strategy with the new customers and current customers? People will remember you, remember how you treat them during the time of this pandemic. So diving and shaping the post-crisis reality. Expect change and look ahead. The necessary focus on the present should not crowd out consideration of the future. Understanding broad 
social shifts. Companies need to look more broad how social attitudes and shifting to understand the observed changes in behavior and consumption could be lasting. Scrutin scrutinize granular high frequency data. Companies need to access, analyze high frequency data such as data on credit cards, transactions at a very granular level in order to spot emerging trends. Identifying your own revealed weakness. Companies' weakness also signals opportunity to renew your products and business models and serve customer better. Fifth point, study regions further ahead in crisis. China and Korea are many weeks ahead of Western countries in their experience of crisis and recovery. Study what happened in these markets. Look at which new pattern reduce friction. Frictions are unnecessary delay costs. Complexity mismatch with needs and other inconvenience that a customer experiences in using a particular offering. Maintain hope and growth opportunities. It's almost relevant almost inevitable that we will face deeper post-crisis recession. This is not a reason to postpone innovations and investments. Finally, I'd like to end with a quote. Experience is everything. Get it right. Good customer experience leave people feeling heard and appreciated. This minimizes friction, maximizes efficiency, and maintains a good human element. Happy learning.